Hello, uh, this is uh, Ludovic Dubost. I'm very happy to participate to Conf42 uh, to present CryptPad, uh, the encrypted collaboration suite. And uh, so who am I? I'm uh, Ludovic Dubos, CEO of Xwiki SIS. Uh, I'm the creator of Xwiki, which is an enterprise wiki. Xwiki SIS is a company based in France and Romania, uh, which has been doing uh, 15 years of open source. Uh, we're 40 employees at Xwiki, and we could uh, set a motto as uh, make a living and contribute. Uh, Xwiki SIS has launched uh, CryptPad as a new tool four years ago. So why, uh, why actually uh, does CryptPad exist? So first, when, when it comes to, to privacy, uh, what, uh, what we see now on, on, on many websites is, uh, is we value your privacy. Uh, this is what most websites are telling us. And unfortunately, uh, when you look and, and go a bit deeper, look at the privacy policies and all the things that uh, is happening with our data, what they actually mean is that they, they use and sell your data uh, for, for many things, either for advertisement, uh, either to sell our contacts, and even or, or to understand what uh, exactly uh, we're, we're doing so that they can sell us more services. Uh, if, we, if we look a bit deeper and we look at the big tech, uh, so Google, Facebook, Apple, Twitter, Amazon, Microsoft, what we see is what do they actually know about us? And this is actually a very long list. They, they know everything about our identity, uh, but they mostly also know a lot of things about us, our friends, the data we share on their systems, and everything we do, uh, including some things that we don't do on their own website. Uh, this is, for example, the example of Facebook that, that knows even what we're doing outside of Facebook. And, and this list goes on and goes on. So it just, actually, I took this list from Security Baron, which made this list and compares a bit everything that uh, uh, the big providers know about us. And, uh, and so that, that's the first problem. And the second problem is, is generally more, uh, what about security? Uh, what we see is that we, we, we're using more and more the internet, including for our work. Uh, I mean, we used to have most of our work on our personal computer or inside the networks of companies. And now uh, we're, we're having uh, everything on the internet, on the cloud. And uh, most of this data is unencrypted everywhere. The transparency of what's happening with this data and uh, how it's being protected or, uh, or handled is actually quite low. Uh, there is a lot of talking, but if we actually want to know what's happening, uh, it's it's almost impossible. And uh, of course, we could also go back to some sort of self-hosting or use providers that are more ethical. Now, the difficulty is that it's not actually easy for small actors or even yourself uh, to secure your own data. Like if you're if you're running your own server, uh, it requires uh, quite some experience to actually secure it. Uh, so, so why did we actually do CryptPad? And so the, the question that we ask ourselves is, what can we actually do to actually enforce users' privacy and security using encryption? Is it actually possible to build a, a collaboration software uh, that, uh, that takes this as a, as a key principle? And uh, this is uh, how uh, we ended up building CryptPad as an alternative to collaboration tools. Xwiki SIS is a company rooted in collaboration. And so this is a type of, of uh, things we do at Xwiki, like <laughs> helping people collaborate on data. And, uh, and so we, we decided to build a collaboration tool that is guided by, by, uh, by privacy and security principles. Uh, and the, the correlation of this is that there is no business model based on the user's data in, uh, in what we do. Uh, so the, what are the key principles of CryptPad? Uh, we, we, we start by uh, creating encrypted shared documents uh, that can be edited in real time. So this actually comes from the history of CryptPad. Uh, we, we were interested in real-time collaboration. How can you edit documents 
at the same time for, for the Clicky software. And we realized that we were able to actually encrypt that real-time collaboration and use the server as just storage of encrypted data while the, the, the handling of the real-time collaboration was happening entirely in the browser. So we decided to actually make a software uh, that would just work with the encrypted data. Uh, the second key principle is that there is a management of keys. Uh, encrypting is, is, is a first challenge and handling real-time collaboration is, is a challenge. But the second challenge of, uh, of this type of technology is how do you actually handle the keys, secure them, and share them with other users? And so we're handling these keys in, uh, in personal, shared, or team drives. Uh, so you can, you, 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 every user has a, has a personal drive, which is itself an encrypted document, which is, is protected by your username and password with, for which a key is created. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, the, the, the personal drive is stored on the server and will contain encrypted all the other, uh, references to the other pads or documents that you have. Uh, and the keys associated to them. But we also have shared and team drives. That, and so what's interesting there is that, well, uh, a shared and team drive is a drive that is accessible by multiple users. So whatever you store in that drive, uh, pad and keys will be accessible to the other users. So once you have a, a shared or team drive between users, you're not only sharing the documents, you're also sharing uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the keys of these documents. Uh, and the third key principle is that we have a system to exchange keys uh, using personal messaging boxes, uh, that, and this is using public-private key cryptography. So if you, if you need to, to send a document to another user, uh, once you've been in contact with that user, uh, you, you have his, his public key, and so you can send him a message, and he will receive it, the message in his script pad and will be able to decrypt it. Uh, and, uh, and, and in this message, there would be the, 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 the document address, uh, the pad, and the key associated to it. Uh, so what do we actually know uh, about you when you're using CryptPad? So there, there's things, uh, so there's a few categories, and, and we have a document on our blog. You, you can go see our blog on this subject. Uh, and so there's things we, we cannot avoid to see, but we actually don't collect. Uh, and so this is IPs and public keys. Uh, so we, we, we do see the IPs of our users and, and, uh, and what type, what documents they actually request. And we see the public key also associated to this IP. Now we're, we're not storing that connection, but ultimately if we, if we, uh, if we wanted to do it as a hoster of, of CryptPad, uh, this is uh, what we could do. Uh, then there's uh, other things that we store uh, because we actually need it. So we store the encrypted files and these encrypted files are linked to the public keys to the users. We also have the information of the user's identity when they're paying users because this is actually required by law. And uh, we also have statistical information. So this is not uh, information that we necessarily would have to store. First, this is information that we do see, uh, the IPs, the actions that people do on our servers, uh, and also uh, information that uh, users have allowed us to, uh, to access. So for example, we have a telemetry setting where uh, you're, you can accept or refuse to, to send us the actions that you're doing in the tool so that no content is actually shared at that point, only the actions. Uh, and this statistical, statistical information include locations. And we're, we're very interested in that information because it, it's information that allows us to understand how, how is CryptPad progressing and how is it progressing in different countries. Uh, and uh, we, we could uh, in the future uh, like record that information less uh, but it's actually quite quite useful for for making CryptPad a success at this point, and uh, and of course if you host your 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 CryptPad yourself, then then the the hoster of that CryptPad becomes the one that uh, has access to this information and decides what uh, what he stores or not. Now it's 
uh, we it, it could be possible to to potentially have even less access uh, to this information, but it, it, it's quite difficult. Like it's very it's much more difficult to not have access to users' IP IPs, uh, and then uh, then uh, then that. So uh, this is things that maybe in the future could be can be continuously improved. But now the thing is what we what we cannot know. So the first thing is we don't know your password. We don't even know your username. So th this is actually um, uh, something that's quite interesting is that most uh, uh, most websites, one of the biggest problem is actually that you're, you're sending your password uh, to the websites for verification. Well, in TripPad, we're, uh, we're doing uh, uh, an authentication that is based on cryptography and where your username and passwords are never leaving your your um, uh, your computer. So we're deriving a key and this key represents data on our server. Uh, and uh, the second part of, uh, of what we can't know is the actual content of uh, the documents that you're, you're storing on CryptPad. All these documents have are encrypted including the data, the titles, the metadata tags, or, or, or all this information. And um, this is actually um, protecting your data way more than, than potentially some collaboration software, which encrypt the content, like the, the, the text that you could find in some, in some data structure, but would keep the, 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 the structured data around this data uh, as, uh, as non-encrypted. Uh, and so in, in TripPad, we've, we've done, uh, we've went in great lengths to, to actually have as little information as possible on the content that people collaborate on. And so, uh, the, 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 when you're sharing your pad, uh, uh, we, we don't know the name of the collaborator that you're sharing it with. Um, now, what do we actually have in CryptPad, and what are what are the, the collaboration tools that exist? So I'll, I'll show a, a demo of these. So um, we started with a uh, with a rich text pad, uh, which which is a WYSIWYG uh, document that you you collaborate on in real time, and we have a code pad where you can do markdown and uh, also include uh, some uh, some specific markup like Mermaid. To do some graphs, uh, you we also have a presentation pad, which is again in Markdown, but allows to present uh, as slides. Uh, we uh, we have uh, Sheets, which is based on the integration of only Office inside QuickPad, so it's Excel compatible. You can you can export and import an Excel file, and it has a quite uh, quite good set of features of Excel. Uh, similar to, to Excel. Uh, we have a Kanban, so similar to Trello, uh, where, where you can organize some, some tasks in, in the Kanban for form. We have a whiteboard and we have a poll, uh, a poll tool. And all this is organized uh, in, a, in a trip drive, so you can, you can organize your content and add attached files, uh, PDFs, uh, or any, any types of file you want. And we have a Teams feature, which allows to share such a drive and including a chat uh, with, uh, with a group of people that you decide. So let's actually look a bit uh, at, uh, at these features. Uh, and so if I, uh, if I, if I go uh, to, to Crip Drive here, uh, here you can, see, you can see my drive. Uh, with uh, with folders, so I can actually organize this in folders. Uh, this uh, specific drive in in my uh, folder list is actually a shared drive. We can recognize it using the little icon, and so that means that I can actually share that uh, that folder with uh, with other users. Uh, so I can actually do that using the share button. Uh, I can share uh, by knowing the people and sending it, then sending them a notification in CryptPad uh, on this. But I can also fabricate a link uh, for uh, for that uh, for that access either in view mode or in edit mode. So when you're sharing a URL uh, which gives access to paths, you have to be careful uh, to share it in a secure channel because. 
anybody that could read that uh, communication channel could uh, could uh, could access to the information. Uh, the the key point here is uh, the, the the safest way and most secure way to share uh, a pad in CryptPad is actually having having the person the other person in his, in your contact and share the pad using uh, using the account that uh, the person has on CryptPad. Um, so you have folders and we can actually uh, uh, also attach images. So I can, I can drag and drop files in, in this directory. As I can see, I have some in images there. Uh, and then I have some pads. So for, for our most used pad is actually uh, this, uh, the WYSIWYG pad. So let me actually take the example here. Let's see uh, if I have an example. Uh, so this is a sample document that we use to work uh, to to show the common features. So this is uh, this is our our WYSIWYG editor. So you can you can type content here. And so if you have a, if you have a, two users opening that pad, uh, so for example here, if I uh, if I open that pad in uh, in a second window. Uh, you can, uh, I can, I can make changes here, and uh, these changes will uh, will show up on the other screen. Uh, and uh, this uh, this uh, WYSIWYG has quite a lot of features. You can insert images here. You can see uh, an image, and I can I can resize the image. Uh, I can also. Uh, Use bullet points. I can use. Uh, I can put equations in the document, um, so I can chat around uh, around the pad, uh, and I can also comment the pad. So if I if I select uh, some content here, uh, I can I can add a comment. I will add a comment here. And this is actually collaborative because I can mention some other users. And send them a message uh, telling them that I'd like them to uh, to do something in this path. Uh, so there, there's quite a lot of feature. We have a history feature, so you can roll back uh, in case of difficulty. You can export, import. Uh, you can print, uh, and this way, for example, uh, I I extract your pad as PDF. Um, another type of pad that we have is actually the code pad. So. You're typing in Markdown, and you're seeing uh, you're seeing uh, the, the the content directly there. What's interesting there is that you also have color uh, auto colors, so you can actually see who has uh, who has typed what. So if you have multiple users in your pad, then this is similar to a feature that exists in Etherpad, uh, is that you you can see uh, who has added content uh, in a pad. And uh, this pad is uh, is showing uh, mermaid syntax, which allows to do some graphs, uh, including Gantt charts and things like that. Um, so we have also color syntax coloring for other languages in Markdown. So you can you can actually see colors also of the syntax, so that you uh, uh, you understand what you're typing. Uh, another uh, type of pad is actually a whiteboard. So uh, this is actually quite useful for for education. Uh, you can uh, you you can uh, work in real time uh, on uh, on a on a drawing and uh, and show it to uh, to somebody else during a video conference, for example. Another type of pad is spreadsheets, and so this is this has been quite challenging and is actually uh, for us uh, a breakthrough. Is that uh, we're integrating the only Office uh, open source software, which is built in JavaScript, and uh, we're integrating this in CryptPad, and everything that is happening on the documents is is encrypted and stored encrypted on the server, and uh, in even including images. So it's possible to add images to your to your uh, itself to the your spreadsheet. And uh, they will be stored in the trip drive and uh, embedded in your spreadsheet document. And we also have uh, uh, an import export uh, feature. Uh, so if I do export here, I can actually uh, export in uh, in Excel. 
Uh, and so this is actually using WebAssembly uh, because this was C code in, uh, in, uh, in uh, only Office to convert the, the, the document from the internal format of only Office to uh, an Excel format. Um, another, uh, another aspect uh, here is that you, it's, it's a spreadsheet and for example, it supports some graphs. Uh, so you can see a chart uh, based on the, uh, uh, on the spreadsheet data. Um, let me see if I have some other things to show here on, on some examples. So we also have, uh, you can see we have a, a poll uh, and we have a Kanban. I will actually uh, show this here in uh, going back in the presentation uh, in, uh, in, in here. So uh, here we have, uh, so the homepage of Cripad that you can see. And you, uh, you can see that we have uh, extended our, our storage limit on Cripad FR, which is uh, uh, our, uh, our hosted Cripad that uh, we, we provide to the community, which also has a paying subscription. We have extended the free subscription to one gigabyte uh, during the COVID outbreak, as uh, many more users uh, were actually needing online tools. And so this is uh, the drive again. Uh, the pad. So this is the sharing mechanism. I showed that the uh, the code pad, uh, the Kanban. You can see this is actually our squad uh, Kanban, uh, which is uh, which is showing the tasks on which the team is working on. And uh, you can see that it's a quite uh, quite extensive roadmap, lots of work there. Now I'll detail a bit what is planned in the future, uh, and uh, the spreadsheets. Uh, the whiteboard. So uh, now, uh, after this uh, this demo of the of the live tool, um, what I'd like to show is a bit the techno techn technological aspects of Cripad. So the first uh, first uh, item of the technological aspects of Cripad is user authentication. So when you log in in Cripad, you have a username and password, and uh, and that actually use these username and passwords never leave the, the user's computer. We're using S script to derive a key and this key will, re will represent data on our server. And this data is unique. Um, uh, this, this allows to actually bootstrap uh, your, your storage space on Cripad, on the Cripad server. And then uh, will contain the keys of the different documents that you're, that you're sharing. Uh, it's important to understand that if you lose your your password or even your username, we at, at uh, the hosters of a Cripad instance of Cripad FR, we are unable uh, to retrieve it. So it's really your job to secure this properly and make sure you're not uh, you're not uh, losing them. Um, now, when it comes to the documents, uh, what is happening is that every time a document is changing on the, uh, in, your, in your browser, then we're creating a patch, and this patch is sent to the server encrypted uh, using the key of the document. And uh, we have the chain pad algorithm and also some other algorithms which are used to handle concurrent changes uh, without the server being involved. So, this algorithm, the, the merging uh, algorithm, is making sure that everybody gets to the same results, even if there are concurrent patches that would be incompatible. So it, 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 there is not a 100% guarantee that your change is going to make it through if you're in a collaboration session. But what is 100% guaranteed is that everybody will be uh, at the same uh, results uh, in the end. So there is only one possible outcome of the collaboration. Uh, so for example, if you have a user that makes a change on a paragraph and another user that deletes it, uh, the Cripad algorithm will, will choose uh, a pass that uh, will be the same uh, on, on all clients. And so either it will be considered that uh, the, uh, uh, the change was done before the deletion, either it, was be, it will be considered that deletion is done before the change and in the end, uh, you'll get the same result. Um, another aspect uh, is that we, we're storing all documents in Cripad, including your drive, as a history of patches. 
uh, now in, in order to avoid coming back to the beginning of every document so that we can restru- reconstruct the, the current state, uh, we do uh, we store a full version every 50 patches. So if, if you're working on a document, uh, the general principle is that we're, we're sending patches. So if you're, if you're reloading uh, a, a document from scratch, what we will look for is the latest checkpoint and then the patches, and we will reconstruct the state uh, of your document uh, at the end of the, uh, of the last patches. Um, then all document encryption keys are stored in your drive, and the drive is equipped by document itself, which is protected using the same mechanism. Uh, what is uh, particular in the technology of CryptPad is that all the editors are fully written in JavaScript, and we have no server component for any of them. Uh, and so uh, everything's running in your browser, uh, and needs to run in your browser uh, so that we can uh, we can we can secure the the collaboration. Uh, now the question is how how far can this go? Like uh, what can we do with this technology beyond what it's doing today? So you, you, I've shown in the live demo that we're already doing quite a lot of things. Uh, well, we can go uh, much further in terms of integrating any editors that are built in JavaScript. We've already done some prototypes in the past to integrate Draw.io, for example. Uh, and we also have prototypes to integrate uh, the other components of only Office for presentation. So, so uh, PowerPoint compatible and, uh, and Word compatible. Uh, these actually are are uh, quite close from working, but uh, we haven't we didn't want to to launch them because the more pads we have, the more uh, support we need to do uh, to make sure that these all work very well. And so what we what we want is first that spreadsheets is working very very well, and that uh, that uh, it can scale uh, to many users and um, uh, and. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll potentially deploy more, more editors. And there could also be contributors that work and support editors that could run on the same platform. Um, there's also the possibility to build more advanced applications uh, that are built on top of the CryptPad storage. So we have focused on one advanced application, which is managing your drive, because this is actually something we absolutely needed uh, to secure the collaboration on the pads. Uh, but you could also imagine calendars, blogs, wikis, uh, databases that are built on this encrypted storage or surveys. And uh, we, we plan to work on some of them uh, in the future. Uh, but this, this approach could be used uh, for, for, for any type of application, but you need to think differently when you build them because you need to to build them with, with uh, the, 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 the constraint that everything will happen on the client side and nothing will be done by the server, which is not really the way most applications have been built in, in, in the recent years, where actually uh, all the providers are trying to build applications that they control on which users are dependent. Uh, another type of things we could do is, and we've done some, uh, some experiments on this, is encrypted audio video conferencing. And we find it interesting because it's very interesting to add at least audio conferencing around the document. When you're working collaboratively in the document, it's interesting to be able to talk to each other. And, uh, and actually the CryptPad system can, can transfer uh, also audio and video data and the browser could implement uh, playing it. Uh, another uh, aspect is, uh, is, uh, well, we, we can go very far in terms of what we can build and new things we can build. Now, the thing is, uh, there is a lot of work already to bring all editors and applications on par with non-encrypted applications. Uh, if we look at what we do in CryptPad, uh, we, have, uh, we have a lot of applications uh, like WYSIWYG editing, uh, Markdown editing, uh, only Office, uh, Office compatible editing, uh, we also have a Kanban, which uh, potentially is a competitor to Trello. And so all these applications, they, they compete with tools that have a, a very large range of features, and some of them are not so easy to build. Uh, 
Uh, and so there's a lot of work to bring these editors on par uh, with uh, non-encrypted applications. So, uh, so, so we need to, to also choose between the number of editors and the, uh, and the, uh, the, the quantity of features in the editors. Uh, another aspect is that uh, users are also very interested in mobile and offline access to these documents. So uh, this is a bit the difference between uh, Google, uh, Google Drive, Google Docs, and uh, Dropbox. Uh, uh, people are also interested to, to, to replicate their data on their computer um, and to edit it potentially offline. And so there is also uh, some, uh, some range of work that is significant uh, to, write, uh, to write mobile and uh, desktop clients for, for Quipa. Uh, there is also advanced search uh, that will be uh, an, interesting, uh, an interesting challenge uh, to build. And uh, another aspect is that uh, it's, uh, it's possible to make Cryptpad a decentralized uh, uh, service. And so this is also an axis of work and where basically Cryptpad instances would collaborate and you, you could have a user on one Cryptpad instance that is working collaboratively on a document with a user from another instance. And that's another axis of work uh, for, for the team. And now, what is actually our roadmap? So most of our roadmap uh, is is built today uh, on some on the fundings we were able to get for the project. I'll mention a bit that funding later. Uh, and so right now we are uh, we have received funding from NLNet and NGI Trust, and uh, and so we're very grateful of that funding, which is allowing to to build a, to 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 fund a very active roadmap. And so most of the developments that we're doing are, are based on, uh, on the roadmaps we have, uh, on the developments we have proposed to these projects. And so uh, right now we're finishing up the communities project funded by NLNet, uh, which already has funded the Teams feature in Cryptpad. Uh, and uh, so we're finishing the projects and we're finishing implementing document review. So the comments that I've shown on, in the WYSIWYG pad uh, have been funded by this project. We also uh, have improved the, in, in the administration panel and, and we're also improving documentation for users and instance administrators. Um, then the second uh, project we will be working on is, is called SMC, Secure Mobile Communication, and the objective there is to develop a prototype Android application. Uh, and this this should also open a lot of things because underlying there is work about making making Cryptpad more modular. Uh, the third project uh, is a dialogue project uh, which uh, we plan to do uh, in in the second part of this year. Uh, and the objective will be to improve the current poll application and implement a form application. So this what we will implement in the dialogue project will also open new possibilities. Uh, in terms of uh, of applications built on on top of the Cryptpad storage, so we'll create some APIs that can be used by uh, by uh, even more complex applications. And uh, in parallel, uh, we're always uh, working on maintenance and performance. Uh, this actually has been super active in the last six months, uh, as uh, as I will show with. Uh, with the usage of Cryptpad, which has grown a lot, and particularly because of, of the COVID crisis, uh, we have done a lot of work on performance and uh, we need to continue to sustain the growth of, uh, of usage, in particularly of the Cryptpad FR instance, uh, so that we can get more users. Uh, and so uh, if we look at the Cryptpad, uh, Cryptpad FR usage, so uh, we have about 450 installs in the world, including uh, including Cryptfor. Cryptfor is our main instance uh, that is uh, managed by our team, and uh, this instance uh, has seen a, a tremendous growth uh, in uh, when the when the COVID crisis uh, started, and in, in for because of in particular two types of users. One is, is people working from home, so needing more collaboration tools, but also uh, the education uh, and space and schools, uh, which needed ways to collaborate with students. And we've been <coughs> able to see um, uh, on Cripad FR that we had a lot of teachers uh, that, were, that were using Cripad. 
That aspect of uh, TripAd usage is that TripAd is actually heavily used in Germany, uh, which is the first country uh, where it's being used. Uh, so this is actually not the uh, where the Kripa team uh, originates from. The Kripa team is um, is actually uh, from a French company based in Paris. And so France is also a, a, a big country of usage, but the, the, the German usage is actually uh, much higher. And, uh, and um, since the Kripa crisis, we've reached about 50,000 users per week and 350,000 pads open, open in a week. And this was actually four four times higher uh, than what we had before. So what we have seen also is that uh, uh, the usage of CritPad has, uh, has grown uh, a lot in the US. First, it has grown because of COVID, and then it has also more than doubled um, and, uh, in the last two weeks. And we believe that this is linked to, to the protests uh, in the US. And uh, and to to some uh, users recommending the the usage of uh, encrypted tool. Uh, if we look at uh, the usage of CryptPad over three years, uh, we 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 can see that uh, the effect of the the COVID crisis on the amount of pads uh, open on CryptPad, uh, where where we uh, uh, we went uh, in a year uh, almost tenfold. Uh, but in the year before, we were already uh, growing uh, two, three times. Uh, and another thing we see is that we, we see that many of our users are actually recommending other users to, to use TripPad, and we're, we're very grateful for that. And it, it really helps uh, spreading uh, spreading the usage and showing that, uh, uh, that, uh, that it's possible to actually use uh, uh, more uh, privacy-friendly tools for collaboration. Um, all this data that I'm showing is only based on the CRIPAD FR data, and, and we also have uh, other instances. So there is 450 other instances and on which we don't have uh, detailed data uh, on, the, on the usage. Um, the CRIPAD team is currently three full-time developers, so it's actually not a very big team, uh, which is uh, handling the development and uh, and also handling the main prepare for instance uh, the team receives some support from the XUKSIS team so uh, from human resources from marketing and and also from me uh, we have uh, more than 400 independent instances and we have a community of users and some administrators uh, that are participating to our matrix channel and uh, and that are also helping promoting cryptpad uh, CryptPad wouldn't be what it is without the promotion of all the other users uh, that are making it known. Um, so when it comes to the CryptPad funding, and, and I believe that it's very important to talk about the funding of open source tools because uh, it's very important to have open source tools. We're strong believers of open source tools, but it, it's, it, it's, it, it, it's really hard to get open source tools if we don't manage to fund them properly. Uh, so CryptPad originated initially from a, a French-funded project by uh, by BPI, so it's a, f a state uh, organization funding R and D, uh, and uh, and out of this project was what was funding uh, both uh, was funding Xwiki and some other companies. Uh, this is how we got CryptPad uh, Bootstrap. Uh, at the end, uh, at the in at the end of March 2019, this funding ended, and uh, and we needed to find some ways to continue that project. And we've been happy to uh, to candidate to uh, the NGI uh, Pet, Pet Zero Fund, and the NLNet has funded uh, multiple projects uh, that are improving CryptPad. And we also got a funding from NGI Trust. Uh, which uh, which uh, is, has helped us complete the funding for the year. Uh, we've also uh, has uh, have been happy to receive a 10k uh, 10k dollar grant from the Mozilla Open Source Fund uh, when we we candidated to it at FOSDEM uh, this uh, this this year. And uh, so this is actually very interesting because it has allowed us to fund the team that was. Uh, and working on CRIPAD and to be able to continue to fund them. Now, uh, 
What is also very important is what kind of long-term funding we're able to, to, to build. And so we have a, we have a few, uh, few strategies in place for that. So the first thing is that Crepat FR is a paying service. And uh, for us, it's really important to, to build it right away as a paying service, uh, unlike m- many, many cloud services that are starting for free initially, uh, trying to reach millions of users and then are, are making users discover the paying scheme. Uh, for us, uh, we believe that it was really important to to show to show how we believe that we can fund that that project long term. So we 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 need funding so that we can we can get the software off the ground. But then we need a model where where it can be sustained over time and we can build a team. And so uh, so regularly, as as users have uh, have increased, we've uh, we've increased subscribers. And we've reached now uh, 170,000, 170 uh, subscribers. Uh, so now we've reached uh, 170 subscribers of Crip- on the Crypto Day, for instance, which represents uh, 1,000 euros per month uh, of subscriptions. And uh, we also have uh, an open collective. Cripad is one of the popular projects on open collective. And we have 160 donators on Open Collective that represents 500 euros per month. Uh, all this is evaluated as about 20k euros uh, for for 220. Uh, now, it's important to understand that this is still 10x away from being able to completely fund the team only based on revenue and not being relying on uh, on grants to to be able to sustain the development. And now we, we, we believe that it's, it's possible to continue to increase the usage of the, the main Crypad instance and, uh, and increase both subscribers and donators. And there's also possibilities to, to, uh, to package support services for, for enterprise instances, which could also bring some revenue to help fund the technology. Uh, well, we welcome any any help that they can be. Uh, we welcome also contributors and uh, and that would want to help uh, in continuing to to improve this product uh, and uh, and also administrators that want to host instances and make Cripad uh, more more known and uh, and propose a solution uh, so that. Uh, we're using less uh, non-privacy friendly tools and uh, we're using more tools that are protecting our data and our privacy. Uh, thank you very much. And I've been really happy to participate to uh, this Con42 conference and I, I hope you, you appreciated this talk. Thank you.